that river was like traveling back to the earliest beginnings of the world when vegetation rioted on the earth and the big trees were kings. An empty stream with great silence, an impenetrable forest. The air was warm, thick, heavy, sluggish. There was no joy in the brilliance of the sunshine. Like a sluggish beetle crawling on the floor of a lofty portico, it made you feel very small, very lost. We penetrated deeper and deeper into the heart of darkness. It was very quiet there. We were cut off from the comprehension of our surroundings. We glided past like phantoms, wondering and secretly appalled as sane men would be before an enthusiastic outbreak in a madhouse. We could not understand because we were too far and could not remember. Because we were traveling in the night of the first ages, of those ages that are gone, leaving hardly a sign and no memories. The dust came gliding in long before the sun had set. The current ran smooth and swift, but a dumb immobility sat on the banks. The living trees, lashed together by the creepers and every living bush on the undergrowth, might have been changed into stone. Even to the slenderest twig, to the lightest leaf, it was not sleep, it seemed unnatural, like a state of trance, not the faintest sound of any kind could be heard. You looked on amazed and began to suspect yourself of being dead. Then the night came suddenly and struck you blind as well. When the sun rose, there was a white fog, very warm and clammy, and more blinding than the night. It did not shift or drive, it was just there, standing all around you like something solid. At eight or nine, perhaps, it lifted as a shutter lifts. We had a glimpse of the towering multitude of trees of the immense matted jungle with the blazing little ball of the sun hanging over it. A very loud cry of infinite desolation soared slowly in the opaque air. A complaining clamor modulated in savage discord filled our ears. The sheer unexpectedness of it made my hair stir under my cap. I don't know how it struck the others. To me it seemed as though the mist itself had screamed so suddenly and apparently from all sides at once. I had turned to the wilderness, really, and for a moment it seemed to me as if I also were buried in a vast grave full of unspeakable secrets. I felt an intolerable weight oppressing my breast. The smell of the damp earth the unseen presence of victorious corruption, the darkness of an impenetrable night. The brown current ran swiftly out of the heart of darkness, bearing us down towards the sea with twice the speed of our upward progress. The long reaches that were like one and the same reach, monotonous bends like they were exactly alike, slipped past the Klotok with their multitude of trees, looking patiently after this grimy fragment of another world. 
the forerunner of change, of conquest, of trade, of massacre, of blessing. I have wrestled with death. It's the most unexciting contest you can imagine. It takes place in an impalpable grayness, with nothing underfoot, with nothing around, without spectators, without clamor, without glory, without the great desire of victory, without the great fear of defeat, in a sickly atmosphere of tepid skepticism and still less than that of your adversary. If such is the form of ultimate wisdom, then life is a greater riddle than some of us think it to be. I was within a hair's breadth of the last opportunity for pronouncement, and I found with humiliation that probably I would have nothing to say. No, they did not bury me, though there is a period of time which I remember mistily the shuddering wonder, like a passage through some inconceivable world that had no hope in it and no desire. I found myself back in the city, resenting the sight of people hurrying through the streets to filch a little money from each other, to devour their infamous cookery, to gulp their beer, to dream their insignificant and silly dreams. Their very which was simply the bearing of commonplace individuals going about their business in the assurance of perfect safety, was offensive to me, like the outrageous flaunting of folly in the face of the danger it is unable to comprehend. I had no particular desire to enlighten them, but I had some difficulty in restraining myself from laughing in their faces so full and stupid importance. I dare say I was not very well at the time. My endeavors to nurse up my strength seemed altogether beside the mark. It was not my strength that wanted nursing. It was my imagination that wanted soothing.